Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this particular video, we will be seeing different relational algebra operations using the MapReduce concept and also we will be looking into one of its operations in detail. So here are the few listed relational algebra operations. These are most important operations. They are selection, projection, union, intersection, difference, natural join and grouping and aggregation. So these are the relational algebra operations. You might have heard it in normal database management systems. But in this particular video, we'll be looking into it with the help of big data concept. How MapReduce uses the mapping and reducing technique to carry out these operations for the big data. In this particular video, we'll be specifically seeing the selection operation. So if you have a table and you want to select only those records which satisfies a particular condition, then in that case, we use the selection operation. In MapReduce, selection can be done with the help of map and reduce task. So let's have a look at the selection algorithm. So under the map task, first we need to iterate over all the values present in that particular relation and we'll store each value in a temporary variable tuple. Now we have a tuple inside the variable tuple. We will check whether that tuple satisfies a given condition. The condition can be specified by the user and if it satisfies the condition, then only we'll be emitting tuple comma tuple. Emit function takes two parameters. The first parameter is the key and the second parameter is the value. If emit function says that it is going to emit tuple and tuple, that means it is going to emit the tuple in the form of key as well as the values. Now, this is all about map task. Now, once the map task is done, immediately the control will go to the reducer workers and the reducer workers will carry out the reduce task. Now, in the selection operation, reducer worker only emit the key that is associated with that particular selected tuples. That's it. So this is the selection algorithm. If you guys haven't understood this algorithm yet, don't worry. We'll be looking into an example. By the end of that example, you will be aware of this particular algorithm. And let's have a look at the problem that we are going to be focusing on. So here we have taken two map workers. I hope you remember that big data divides the entire data into parts and each part will be processed separately and parallelly. So here we have taken two map workers. Each map worker is having two table. Note that all these tables are a part of a single table that contains two attributes A and B. So if you look at the algorithm, first step is to iterate over all the values and then we need to check the condition. Now in this case, we have taken the condition as the value that is associated under the column B has to be strictly less than or equal to 2. So if we check the first record, the first record contains the values 1 and 2 and the value that is coming under the attribute B is 2. It is satisfying the condition hence it can be selected. But if we see this tuple 3 and 5 then it won't be selected because it is not satisfying the condition. I hope you understood the logic of selection. Now let's solve this particular problem step by step. So first we'll be having the first map worker and then we'll be having the second map worker. So in the first step you need to create the key value pairs of each and every record. If you remember the map function converts every record in the form of key value pairs. Similarly we'll be doing it for every map worker. So let me quickly create the structure of the table and this is how the table will be looking like. So now that we have created this structure, let's go to our very first record which is 1 and 2. So according to the algorithm, we need to create the tuple of this particular record. So this is how the tuple will look like 1 comma 2. Now since we are emitting tuple comma tuple, 
Hence, the key and the value will be the same unless the record is not repeating. So, similarly, we need to convert the second record, which is 3, 1 in the form of key value pairs. But before that, we need to check the condition that whether the value that is coming under the B attribute is satisfying that condition, which is it should be less than or equal to 2. Yes, it is less than or equal to 2. Hence, we can write it under the key and value section. Now, next we have 1, 2 again. But if you clearly observe that 1, 2 was already there in the database. So also note one thing that map workers will also check whether there are duplicate keys present in the database. If they are, then you need to just remove one of them and then you need to append the same value again. So if you carefully observe the total number of tuples present for a particular key in the value section will tell you that how many times that particular key or that record has got repeated inside the entire database. Now the next record is 3, 5 which doesn't satisfy the condition which says that B should be strictly less than or equal to 2. Hence we will not append it inside our key value pairs. So we are done with the map worker 1. Now let's move on to map worker 2 and we have to follow the same steps. So you can see the first two records are not satisfying the condition. Hence we will move to the next records. The next record is 1, 1. It is satisfying the condition hence we will append it under the key value section. Next we have 2 comma 1, again it is satisfying the condition, hence we will append it in the key value section. So we are done with the key value conversion of all the records that are present in the relations. Now once you are done with the conversion, after this a particular hash function will be applied onto the map workers. After this the entire key value section that is associated with a particular map worker will be divided into two. Now why we are dividing it into two because we will be switching one of the tables after dividing between different map workers. So now you can see that our map worker one contains two key value pairs. So after dividing the map worker one, there will be two key value tables and each of them will contain one tuple. So let me quickly create the structure of the table that will be be created after applying the hash function to each of the map workers. So you can see that each map worker will be containing now two key value tables and this is how the entire structure will be looking like. And note one thing that each map worker will be working independently. So now let's try to write all the tuples inside this key value pairs. So first you can see that the first tuple is 1 comma 2 so we will write it the first key value table as it is. Now the next tuple is 3 comma 1. It will come in the next key value table. So I hope you are getting it. If, if your original key value table contains 10 tuples then you need to separate 5 tuples in the first key value table and 5 in the next key value table. Similarly for the next map worker we will be writing the first record which is 1 comma 1 in the first table and the next record which is 2 comma 1 in the next table. I hope this particular step is clear to you all. If you get any doubts then you can straight away put it in the comment section. Now after the map task is done the control will go to the reducer workers and this reducer workers will try to compute the reduce task. Everything happens for some reason. I told you that this division will be done with the help of the hash function is to switch the tables from one map worker to the other map worker. This swapping will be done to discard the redundancies that can be caused by the duplicated tuples. So in the next step also you need to create the four tables like this and you need to write the first and the fourth table in its place as it is. Just you have to switch the second and the third table. So let me quickly write the same thing again. So you can see that we are done with the creation of the structures of all the tables that are required. Now as I said we will be writing the first table as it is. So we have the first tuple which is 1 comma 2 with two keys 1 comma 2 and 1 comma 2. We will be writing it as it is and we are going to switch the second table with the third table 
and vice versa. So we will be writing the tuple 1 comma 1 in the second table and the tuple 3 comma 1 in the third table. And then we will be writing the fourth table which contains the tuple 2 comma 1 as it is. So now we are done with this particular task. So now we will move on to the next task in which we will have to club these two tables in the reducer worker 1 and the two tables in the reducer worker 2. In a one single table that is key value and note one thing while we are going to club the tuples from these two tables we'll also check whether there are certain duplicate keys present or not so if we check the first reduce worker in that in the first table it contains one comma two tuple we'll write it in the latest key value table and while writing we'll also check whether there are duplicates that are contained in the next table or not. So duplicates are not contained. Now the next tuple is 1 comma 1. It also doesn't have any duplicates hence we'll write it as it is. Similarly we'll do it for the next reducer worker node and it contains two tuples without any duplications. So we are done with this particular step. Now we are almost done. Now we will move on to the last step which is to emit the keys that is associated with this particular key value pair. So if you remember the original problem statement contained two attributes A and B. So our final result will also contain the attributes A and B in both reducer worker nodes because ultimately after selection you will be getting the records that satisfies a particular condition and the attributes will remain as it is. So we will write the attributes A and B under the reducer worker node 1 and same goes for the reducer worker node 2. So let me quickly create the structure of the tables that are going to be looking like in the last step. So the structure of the final result will look something like this. So if you look at the previous result, the first key that is present is 1 comma 2. So we will write 1 under the A attribute and 2 under the B attribute. Now the next tuple under the key section is 1 comma 1 so we will write 1 under the A attribute and 1 under the B attribute similarly we will do it for the reducer worker node 2 and the final result will look something like this these are the selected tuples from the entire database that satisfies the particular condition that was specified by the user so I hope you have got the entire steps to solve this type of problem. You can also check with the manual method whether the final result is correct or not based on the given condition. So now we are completely done with the entire example. I hope you have got the algorithm as well as the example. Now if you look back to the algorithm you will be understanding how the flow goes and the significance of each and every step in the algorithm. Comment down your reviews and suggestions regarding this particular video. And for more such videos, do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Also hit the bell icon and don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching.